It's a rare Philip K. Dick fan that has not read the short story Rude. It has been often anthologized and has the fame of being Dick's first sale. It was published in 1953, by which time Dick had already seen a few other tales of his in print. It is a fun story about a dog dealing with some suspicious visitors, but it's also been often analyzed seriously by scholars as it was by the author. As the story opens, the dog, later named, identified as Boris, is watching a rug as it comes to the house. The name Rug is the same as the sound that Boris makes when he sees the creatures invade his yard. Boris is owned by the Kadursi family, and they are enjoying their breakfast routine. The Rug appears to have been the paperboy. Around 11 a.m., Boris notices two Rugs sitting on a fence talking about Boris, whom they refer to as a guardian. Speaking directly to Boris, they demand that he allows them to take the offering provided by the Cardosi family. The Rugs proceed to use a map to study the neighborhood and state a frustration for the large number of guardians. That evening, Mr. and Mrs. Cardosi discuss Boris's temper and tendency to bark furiously at other people, especially the garbage men who come on Friday morning. On Friday morning, Boris watches as the Rugs come again. Boris begins barking violently, disturbing Mr. Cardosi. The Rugs dump the contents of the offering urn onto the ground and then begin shifting through it. One of the Rugs eats an eggshell. Boris's bark stopped the Rugs' suspicious gaze at a shaded window. Boris, eventually defeated in his attempt to stop the Rugs, watches them leave with the offering. The story is a creative look at the world through a dog's eyes, explaining why they incessantly bark at the people who come to suburban houses on various business. Dick adds in his notes that Boris is clearly insane. However, much of what he sees and hears is actually uncommon in the everyday process of paper delivery and garbage collection. Casing the neighborhood for guardians and eating garbage are not normal activities for garbage collectors. Although we could imagine that some may truly wish dogs ill will. Of course, since most people rarely notice these workers arriving at their homes, the most paranoid interpretation uh, can be that the dog is not at all insane and actually sees these workers as they are, malevolent forces in the neighborhood. Either the dog is driven insane by the daily torment of unwanted visitors, or Dick is telling us that we really should pay more attention to the people who come to our door. Dick himself seems to prefer the first reading, writing in his comments on the story, We're not just dealing with a dog and a dog's view of garbage men, but a crazy dog who has been driven crazy by these weekly raids on, his, on the garbage can. The dog has reached the point of desperation. I wanted to convey that. In fact, that was the whole point of the story. The dog had run out of options and was demented by this weekly event, and the Rugs knew it. They enjoyed it, they taunted the dog, they pandered to his lunacy. This does not mean that the later reading is without value. The invisibility of oppression seems to quickly come to the forefront. Oppression, in this case a rather banal example of consuming garbage, is often hidden in the everyday experiences that we take for granted and assume it's just a normal part of life. How many of us actually look at that closely at waiters, cashiers, postmen, and at the others we interact with? Perhaps a dog's eye's point of view will help us see the ideological forces at the root of our interpersonal relations, or at the least, let us take more seriously all the labor in the backdrop of our lives that keep us alive, that keep us going. Of course, I don't want to accept a literal pan, uh, paranoid reading of Rook. But it does lead us to some of his critique of suburban life. Notice that Dick set this story in the suburbs, where people consciously lock themselves into small boxes, dividing themselves from their neighbors, their neighborhood, the community, the cities that, they're, that are nearby. Dogs are sometimes encouraged to be paranoid for the added benefit of home protection. This is something profoundly antisocial, uh, but it's quite common in suburban life. This critique of suburbia is probably where I'd like to leave this story. But in that context, we find that this paranoia and the antisocial aspects of suburban life are directly tied to the oppression. By locking ourselves into boxes, we do not protect ourselves from the systemic oppression of the state and capitalism. It is those who are engaged in the world, its problems and its solutions, that pose a challenge. In this story, it could be Boris that represents this direct challenge to the forces out there in the world. So we see... Several aspects of Dick's critique of power and middle-class life in the story, but this, along with its clever structure and setting, make it one of Dick's most important and memorable early tales.